Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever it is, wherever you are. Thank you for listening to the Backlog Busting Project. My name is Wes. With me, as always, is Randy. Hey, we got through one. Yeah. Now, now it gets tougher. A little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. Uh, we are continuing our series to uh, nominate games for the top 100 games of all time, posting to w2mnet.com. Speaking of W, holy crap! Speaking of W2Mnet.com, there we go. I can English. Got that out of the way early. We have the site's uh, co-owner, founder, however he wants to put it. I'll let it explain. Let him explain it in his own terms, Mister Sean oh. Garmer. Let, let him explain it because he I... can speak English. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, hi, everybody. I am Sean Garmer, and you know, really, it's just. It's a site owned by like six people. So uh, Randy being one of them. So, you know, it, I'm mainly the main editor, editor in chief, the person that every time these guys get reviews, I'm the one that talks to all the PR people and yeah, you know, kind of makes sure everything goes as smoothly as possible. Yeah. He, he's the one on that the hurts all the cats. <clears throat> yeah. I, I was going to say it might be owned by six, but it's run by one. Yeah, because the rest of us are getting distracted <laughs> by shiny yeah. things, uh, <laughs> and I say us oh, when I, I I am not one of the six. I do I do consult, but uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway. So as we mentioned, uh, since we're returning as the backlog busting project to be a regular feature on w2mnet.com, we figured we'd come back with a bit of a bang and do the top 100 games of all time as decided on by us and the w2mnet staff. Last week we had Robert Taylor join us and do uh, the the original kind of the, the first generation I I would say of the modern home console. Uh, so pr- primarily the NES. We had a, we had one or two good talks about Atari 2600 games. Mm-hmm. Um, but primarily the, the, the Nintendo Entertainment System. And uh, this week, well, now things start to get a little hairy, because this is honestly, I think, where you really start saying that video games kind of started to take hold in the zeitgeist, and in, in the public, you know, opinion. It's the Super Nintendo and the Genesis. And I think maybe one or two other games might sneak in here, but let's be honest, it's primarily the Super Nintendo and the Genesis. Um... Let's go ahead and uh, uh, dive right in and talk about uh, the company that does what Nintendo don't, uh, <clears throat> or didn't at the time, and that would be uh, Sega and the Genesis. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and right off the bat kind of name one that I think deserves to be on the list, but I will also acknowledge that I probably have a little bit of a personal bias with this game, and that's Toe Jam and Earl. The original Toe Jam and Earl, uh, because it... it I mean, yes, it's 90s, it's all hell. <laughs> I mean, you, you start out as, you know, you, you can rank your character up through the, the, the ranks, the levels, and they're all, you know, 90s slaying like Doofus and Poindexter. <laughs> and it's, you know, bright neon colors in the menus and rap uh, rap beats, but it's a, it's a pretty solid roguelike, in my opinion. It, it, Sean, have you, Sean, have you ever played this game? Uh, I played it a little bit here and there. I was a super. I was a Nintendo person. I never owned a Sega anything until a Dreamcast. So oh, I was. I was hoping to get some help. I know West absolutely loves this game, and it has come up a lot as one of those games will hit on the backlog, so I can get my hands on it. I haven't played. I mean, it that it's much. cool. It's got that quirky '90s thing that, I like, love, uh, very much like quirk- Earthbound. I was going to say, oh, that I know you, you don't like talking words. about. You said the words. Like you said the words. Not, it wasn't me. I did not. It, I was not the first person to utter Earth fan on this show. Thank God. <laughs> it. Well, it's going to come up when we talk about. Super I know it Nintendo is, but I was. I was like, I didn't. I. 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 Like, me and Mandy, Randy literally had a bet about who would say Earthbound first, and I. Anyway. I mean, look. There's giant hamsters that attack you at certain points in this game, so it's like. Uh, you know, it, that's what I'm saying. That that similar thing to Earthbound, where you got very people that that are thinking very American things are happening on this uh, in this game. Weird things. It's got the you know the funk and and all that going on. Which the soundtrack is one of the things people love um, about this game. So that I've always heard people talk about is 
oh man, this this game, the soundtrack is great, you know. Uh, so I, I I don't uh, I I think Wes is is right on with if you're going to talk about Genesis, this is one of the games I put in a collection. And indeed, it has made several collections. I mean, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I, I know when I talk about Toe Jam and Earl, like I said, I'm talking about the original game, the first game. The second one is just a bad platformer. <laughs> I mean, it, it it still oozes 90s charm, and it's got got its moments of hilarity, but the gameplay itself is god awful uh, in the second game. And the third game's outside the scope of this because it was on the original Xbox. But it was also terrible. Spoiler alert. But the first game, I would love to own it to this day uh, on the original Genesis and be able to go back and play it. Luckily, it's also available as a classic on PSN, if I remember right. But yeah, it's it's pretty good. In my, and I think it at least deserves conversation. Yeah, like I said, I, I, I've never really touched this game. Now that it's been referenced to Earthbound, um, I'm, I'm not a fan of it now. <laughs> No, I'm just listen. If we want to throw it on the list for right now, I know we have a lot of games that are going to come up. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, as, for the one person that's really played it, who, who's saying it really fit the the generation, I have no problem putting it on there. Oh, hey. but it's up up to West. Yeah, well, you know, since I'm the one that brought it up, I'm going to go ahead and throw it onto the pile for right now. Consider it on the pile. Yay! All right, then. So, uh, I guess we'll go to my co-host here and uh, see if he has one that he wants to throw out there. I'll throw... This is a a, a tough one, because, again, we're talking about the top 100 games of all time, and it's Mm -hmm. tough for me to put a sports game on there. Mm -hmm. But, But NHL 94... Yep. That's my childhood. Yep. I mean, I'm not even a hockey fan. Me either. But that's it. But that game, even going back and playing it now, uh, I would play hockey games with a buddy of mine. We, we'd do seasons and stuff. We would take a break, put on NHL 94. It still plays great. Uh, you know, That was the thing with the 16-bit sports games. If you go back and play any of them, whether it was the Madden games of the time or like any of the NBA games other than NBA Jam, which was very arcadey. But any game that wanted to be a simulation like, it felt like everybody skated on ice, just the way the physics worked. Mm-hmm. Well, that works perfect when you have a hockey game. And you have great music playing out throughout the whole thing. Again, saying a straight-up sports game, being a top 100 game of all time, is is tough to say. But I don't know if there's any better sports game than NHL 94. I, I mean, I kind of have to agree with you, honestly. I, I think it does need to go onto the pile and just see see where it kind of ends up in our in our in our voting system because it I, like again I'm not I'm not much of a sports fan period outside of I've started kind of getting into football you know? <laughs> uh, um, but NHL 94 I played that with my cousins who were all massive hockey fans and loved the hell out of it to the point where to this day like the the second you said NHL 94 I started hearing the menu music, and then I started hearing some of the arena music, and I was just like, "Yep, yep, yeah, that I mean, deserves I, to be on there." <laughs> I think uh, besides Tech Mobile for Nintendo, when you start getting into the Genesis and Super Nintendo, that's when you really start getting into. There are actually good sports games happening here uh, with, that have a license and aren't just yeah. generic, you know game number one over here and uh i mean if he's th- nhl 94 is great uh totally agree i loved playing it even though i didn't really care about hockey uh but a sport i did care about and i think we're all going to agree here everybody has played freaking nba jam yep tournament edition. Uh, yep. i broke i think like three controllers because of that game uh i learned what, that I was a really bad sore loser when I was a kid because of that game. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it made me have self-control when I got older of, okay, I can lose. It's not the end of the world. But, you know, that game will make it to where you lose with the ball about to go in the damn cylinder with a sec, you know, a tenth of a second left, and it doesn't go in, and you lost by a point, mm-hmm. and now you have to replay the whole game again. And I would have a friend sitting next to me, and I'd still throw the controller. And 
it, it was bad. It was a bad scene, but still, that game was great. It was just, <laughs> it was just like a really fun game to play. All the iconic, the announcer is iconic just by himself with all the, you know, he's on fire, whatever, Boom, you know. Shaka just, laka. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, we say that because of that. I mean, I'm sure it comes yeah. from a movie or something too, but we say that because of that game. So, uh, I I can vaguely remember some of the players that are on it, but it's because that game stands the test of time. Even when they brought it back recently, when EA got the rights, oh god, that game was still great. Well, yeah, yeah, and that's what what shows it. You know, you see a lot of the remade kind of games from the 16. 16- 16 bit era and they just don't work the nba jam game that came out for the ps3 i thought was just fine it doesn't have the nostalgia feel that you know the 16 bit nba jam did but i'm right there with you i, I think we throw tournament edition on there just because i think they improve some stuff yeah uh, just to, to it allows to you to switch the players around and all that yeah yeah and, and, but and I, it has I like can, the hot spot I, mode and everything yeah yeah I, and i straight remember Obviously, I'm a New York Knicks fan. I remember John Starks, Patrick Ewing, Charles Oakley. Let's go any day of the week. I, I 20 years later, I can remember who was on my team. Yeah. Well, yeah, the '90s Mavs had the the you know the big three, and that's I always played as uh, Jason Kidd or Jamal Mashburn. So mm-hmm. yeah. Meanwhile, meanwhile, NBA Jam is uh, all I have left of my precious Seattle SuperSonics. Oh, oh. <laughs> Sean Kemp and Detlef Shrimp, motherfuckers, and Gary Payton. Uh, <clears throat> Damn right, Sean Kemp. Yeah, well, <laughs> Randy may not, might vaguely remember this, but uh, before the Backlog Busting Project, we attempted to do, uh, 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 our previous attempt at content was called Story Mode. Specifically, we, had a, we, we then also had a subset of that called Versus Mode, where we would play games against each other. And I remember us playing NBA Jam Tournament Edition for Versus Mode. And, of course, it was the Sonics versus the Knicks. And for some reason, in this particular session of NBA Jam, Sean Kemp was a half-court three-point half court three point shot draining motherfucker. <laughs> 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 because for some reason I could not I could not differentiate between the pass and shoot button for the life of me, so I would hit shoot when I meant to pass and just lob up a shot and it would go in immediately after I would cuss because I just you know like it became a gag in 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 the video itself was I would say oh shit and Randy would be like don't say that because it's gonna go in now <laughs> and it would. <laughs> All right, Wes just pr- just made up my mind. I'm taking. NBA Jam off the list. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's also notable for me because it's one of the very few games I actually remember a not Konami code code for, and that's left right A B B A at the today's matchup screen gets you unlimited dunks from anywhere on the court. <laughs> so, I hated doing all the all that stuff when I was a kid. I just like to play straight up, just regular mm-hmm. NBA well, yeah. jam. Well, yeah, there's something to be said for that, but you know, there's also something to be said for just turning all the ridiculous up to 11 and seeing what can happen. Like one of my uh, favorite the big ways, head mode. Yeah. One of my favorite ways to play was to turn on unlimited dunks, unlimited turbo and have hotspot mode on. Cause it then there would become, Oh, Hey, I just spotted an eight core, uh, an eight point hotspot run over to it. Dunk. <laughs> from three quarters of the way across the court. Yeah. So, you know, some dude's just doing a helicopter spin from three quarters of the way across the court. Yeah. And, oh, you know, okay. this, this, is, this is this is the, uh, a thing about, you know, talking talking about games that still t- t- stand the test of time. I literally, now that I've talked about this, I'm literally looking over here at my Sega Genesis, my copy of Tournament Edition, going, God, I wish I had a working controller. <laughs> we have to we have to fix that situation uh let's go on to a, a, a different one let's just go to the big guns the sonic the hedgehog series i think only one needs to be representative of the series and that's I sonic the hedgehog 2 whoa no, i say, I say two why yes. two better than three well again it's a question of we're, we're talking about games that stand the test of time here 
And I think you'll find a lot more people when they talk about replaying the Sonic games in today's day and age are going to tell you they would rather replay 2 than 3. And it's not because... I mean, yes, mechanically speaking, 3 has slightly better graphics and slightly better music and, you know, a few more shields and whatnot, like the, the lightning shield and the fire shield and the water shield, which are all hilariously broken in their own special way. But I think that's kind of the point where... Sega tried started to ride Sonic a bit too hard because Sonic Three was like Sonic Three came out and people were like, "Oh, hey, this is a nice game." And then immediately afterwards, Sonic Sonic and Knuckles came out with the lock on technology, and people realized, "Oh, we got half of a game <laughs> because Sonic Three and Knuckles was very clearly meant to be one game originally." And yet they had to design around it and do Sonic 3 and Knuckles. And I think that ne- negatively per- negatively affected some people's perception of Sonic 3 and, to an extent, Sonic and Knuckles. But Sonic 2 doesn't have any of that issue, and it's still a really fun game to play. Uh, because it's you know the one that introduces a lot of the stuff that people remember about Sonic, like Tails being useless and annoying, and the spin <laughs> dash, and... Hey. Hey, as an older brother, Tails was great. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I love Tails. I, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the guy, but you know, it, it was just like, fuck it. <laughs> it was just like, oh, hey, it's a, a, a another sprite that follows me around, falls on the spikes constantly, and thank God he doesn't lose any rings during actual When you got to play, play two-player, Tails was the best, okay? You know, it uh, it you know he didn't lose rings unless you were in a special stage, in which case he became the bane of your fucking existence. You know, <laughs> but um, okay. you know. Listen, I I, I will sub- submit. I'll say I, I'll go ahead and put it on two. It's not that big of a fight. I just think only one should make it. Oh yeah, I, I agree with you there, and I think, like I said, I think it should be two simply because it's the one that people think about when they think of the Sonic Genesis games. Uh, f- on a consistent, you know, in this day and age, I'm not saying Sonic Three and Knuckles is a bad game inherently because of that. I'm just saying we're talking again. It's a a, a a top 100 games that stand the test of time, mm-hmm. and uh, going back to what I just said, if you told me I wanted to, play, you need to replay a Sonic Genesis game right now, I would go to Sonic Two. All right, Wes, nominate something. Okay. Um, well, we already talked about the one I was going to throw, because as soon as you said NHL 94, I was actually going to hit throw out Tournament Edition. So that's off the list. Um, let's see. What do I got on my Genesis list? We did Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Uh, you know what? Let's take a hard right. Let's talk about uh, Streets of Rage 2. Oh, I, I my gosh. <laughs> how great is that game yeah when you talk I, about beat em ups there's a very short list yeah and streets of rage 2 is like up there yeah because whoa no i do not want to delete my previous version of windows thank you yes do it do wow. it right in the middle of the podcast <laughs> <laughs> you, do you want to go back to windows vista <laughs> God. oh man no, no. do Please, i want to go back do i want to go back to do, do, do we want to talk no let's let me let me go back to windows me why the fuck not uh <laughs> wow <laughs> yeah i roll hard bitches <laughs> Uh, anyway, we were talking about Streets of Rage too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it it it's very much the 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 one of the standard bearers of the side scrolling beat 'em up genre. Like it, it it's it p- paved the way for a lot of the stuff we think of when we think side scrolling platformer. You know, like barely coherent plot. Uh, you know, c- for a bunch of enemies eating food off the ground, that sort of stuff. It's a really good side-scrolling platformer, and I don't think it's really been topped since, with maybe the exception of Castle Crashers. Which might come up later. Uh, Spoiler alert. It's tough. What came out last? Streets of Rage or the Turtles in Time game? I think uh, they might have been in around no, the Street same time. Streets of Rage was first. And no, hey, no, we're talking. Total Time was ninety four. 
and, and and hey, we're talking about the Genesis. So if you want to talk about a turtle side scroller, we need to be talking about Hyperstone oh. Heist. Oh, ha ha ha! Very funny. But you're just saying no <laughs> other games have been better since. But that's my question. I mean, Streets Streets of Rage gets a ton of attention, and I think it's probably better. But uh, don't sleep on Golden Axe. Golden Axe was a pretty good one too. Yeah, I, I liked Golden Axe, but eh. you know, I I just realized I I, I think I was uh, kind of misremembering what golden axe actually was like for some reason i had it more of more in mind as like a, a an rpg or or, or or something similar simply because it's it a hack the, and slash yeah because 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 it's got the fantasy setting which a lot of side scrolling beat em ups don't have with the exception of castle crashers so i'm kind of torpedoing my own argument right now this standard operating procedure for me <laughs> And besides, Castle Crashers is like three episodes from now, so I'll shut up now. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I think I think both of those deserve probably to get thrown onto the pile: Golden Axe and uh, Streets of Rage uh, Two. I say pick one. Uh, we are we already have five games here for the Genesis. We know the meat of this podcast is coming later, mm-hmm. so I-, I would say put on one. Hmm, that's a really tough call. Sean, you're the guest. What? You make what, the pick. Streets of Rage 2? Streets of Rage 2 or one of the Golden Axe games? Oh, Streets of Rage 2. It, okay. It's not even a conversation. Well, Wes was having a conversation in his head, which was great for podcasting, so yeah. I had to go too. <laughs> yeah. You want to you wanna throw out another I, one there, Sean? Honest, I mean, uh, I think we can't, you know, the, the, we can't leave talking Sega without... Um, uh, without talking either Shining Force 2 or one of the Fantasy Stars. Because it's, and it's probably only Fantasy Star 4 because I think the other ones are Mega Drive, which technically is not in this generation. Uh, you mean Master System? Or, yeah, Master System, sorry. Yeah, no, no, no problem. Uh, it's just like the Mega Drive was Shining Force 2 is Genesis. sort of like, you know, we never got Fire Emblem over here. Until way later. Yeah. So Shining Force 1 wasn't really like that. It was a much different kind of game. But then Shining Force 2 was one of the first, like, you know, we get Final Fantasy Tactics later. And I'm sure that would replace it when we're talking, if we're, we're putting a 100 games list there. But you're talking about one of the greatest games on the Genesis, Shining Force 2, for what it does for being a tactical RPG when there wasn't one. Uh, around for us Americans to play, um, I, it's, it uh, stands out to me, and you know I still play it sometimes to this day on a on an emulator. So I don't have old systems like you guys, but yeah, it's, Shame. it's great. Shame. Shame. No, <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> this coming from somebody who has a PS2 with a dying disk drive. So when he does PS2 stuff, it's usually on PCX2. But anyway. Uh, <clears throat> don't we all except you know if it actually runs on your computer that's you know, something else oh. yeah no emulation here because <laughs> you're too t- yeah. yep, you know what nope not gonna go there uh, <laughs> well <Whoa. no. laughs> <laughs> although your computer is probably powerful enough for it now because it, well, it was powerful enough before I, I listen I emulated when I was a teenager all day long but now I try to just add them to my collection so Anyway, uh, hey, I would say, a lot of people, myself included, would be envious of your wonderful, awesome collection. So, so, so um, you know. just, just just before we uh, head, 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 you know, I, I got another game I want to throw out there simply to see Randy's reaction. Altered Hold Beast. On, we're... Oh, fuck you. <laughs> yes. <Okay. laughs> no, again, if we're talking the 100 worst games of all time, absolutely. Altered Beast is a top 10 game. <laughs> You put it around those Zelda CDI games, and, and you're set. I mean, but we we need to decide. I think Fantasy Star Four makes it easily. It's the best RPG on the system. On it, the system that really didn't do RPGs. But I thought I was about to say Fantasy Star did great. Yeah. That's, and that's, I mean, honestly, when you think RPG on the Sega Genesis, we basically named the two that were on the Genesis. Yeah. But I mean, Fantasy Star was. Uh, a big deal. I'm pretty sure all of them, or at least the first four, made it onto the Genesis collection, didn't it? 
uh, on the one that came out for the PS3. I remember playing bits and pieces of a bunch of them um, and enjoying them. They're very basic. They're all like Dragon Warrior style mm-hmm. RPGs at that, where the story kept getting better and better as they were figuring it out. So I say Fantasy Star 4 makes it. Uh, Shining Force 2, I have zero experience with. So, Sean, I, I would leave that up to you because I've never touched it. I mean, I'd put it on the list if you guys want to eliminate it later, I guess. You know, we'll yeah. go through that. Yeah. But. Yep, that sounds, uh, sounds about right to me. Uh, I feel like we got to put Mortal Kombat, one of the Mortal Kombats. See, I don't know. Well, the, the, I think the, Street Fighter. The, but the, the thing about those is a lot well, of those are multi-platform. Like, yeah, I mean, like... But when you think about Mortal Kombat... I think about it starting with, well, for one, the Genesis had the blood, so yeah, you know. But that, when I think about Mortal Kombat, this is where it started. It's it's Mortal Kombat two. It's you know, it, yeah, that just in the room figuring out that I can uppercut somebody into a row of spikes. I mean, how awesome is that? Yeah, Street Fighters should definitely be on the list when we talk about Super Nintendo. But I, I just feel like. That's a war in of itself. When you were talking about Genesis and Super Nintendo going at it, that was that was one of the games that everybody pointed at. Oh, Mortal well, Kombat's better over here. So, and so it's better than Street Fighter. Did you say Mortal Kombat's better than Street Fighter? No, not me. Okay. I don't think okay. that. I'm okay. saying that there was people that would. Okay, if you so were a Genesis is, person. You actually, you you just perfectly set up my 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 take on this, and you can be controversial, I guess. To some people that will disagree with me, I don't care. Uh, I think Mortal Kombat's completely overrated, and it's because of the fact that it had the blood and it had the gore. That you know, in the '90s, we all ate it up. I mean, we're all what early teenage years when that stuff came out. Maybe not quite teenage years when the first one came out. I'm not 100 percent sure on dates, but you know, that was perfect for our age group. It's like, oh my god, there's blood, and you can you rip this dude's head off and stuff. But as far as like fighting games go, which I'm not a big fighting game person. Uh, Street Fighter 2 saved arcades. I think Mortal Kombat I think Mortal Kombat was that game that you played with friends who had the cool parents that let them buy the game. Oh yeah. But when you went to the arcade it was for Street Street Fighter 2. So I, I think to me that is the far more iconic game and it's the better fighting game because now that you know we're in our 30s uh, the, the blood and stuff doesn't surprise us anymore. So once you get past oh, that, I don't I, think Mortal I wouldn't Kombat's say had... it's the better fighting game. That Capcom can't make a Street Fighter game that actually works to save their life. While Mortal Kombat 10, as long as you didn't play it on PC, was pretty I'm damn not, good. I'm not talking about the newer ones. I'm talking about. I this... know, I know. I just wanted to take a shot at Capcom. Yeah, it's with it's their so table. easy to take a shot at Capcom. Yeah, yeah. Ca- Capcom's kind of gotten up there with Konami and companies. It's easy to take pot shots at nowadays. Yeah, but I'm throwing. I mean, unless you guys disagree, I'm putting Street Fighter 2 Turbo on there. I don't care what system it's for. Just I'm, I'm putting that on the list. But I mean, if you guys really want a Mortal Kombat game on there, I, I'm not going to completely debate it. But again, we're going to hit that 30 mark, and then I will start throwing that name that game out as one yeah. to get dropped. I, I, well, the, the the one I would throw out there then is Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. Yeah. Because that 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 was that was the point where I came into the series, and it's a pre, you know it basically you know was the definitive version of Mortal Kombat on either console. So with, with all the characters and all the bonus stuff and all that noise, you right? Know? Okay, I'll put them on. That's fine. Um, another game that we have to bring up. It's one that I honestly have not had any experience, but I'm throwing. I want to throw it on the list. Just because everything I've read, it's easily in the top three Sega Genesis games on a lot of these lists. That's Gunstar Heroes. Uh, It looks fantastic. It looks like it has aged extremely well. um, And I would like to play it, so I think it would make my top 100 just based off of everything else. They still have come out now. It gets redone all the time. uh, As far as, like, it's one of those classic games that always gets brought to a system... It's just, it's really simple to play. You just side scroll and shoot. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it's not in the, like, supremely, it, it's, it's difficult in its own way, but it's not the, oh my God, 
I want to put in a Konami code Contra way either. Yeah. So, you know, and it had a cool character. I like the character. Yeah. So I'll put that on there. I mean, we already had 10 Sega Genesis games. I don't think we're going to get that many. <laughs> I also loved Comic Zone too, but I, I don't know that yeah. I would put it on the list. No. And, and, and the, the, speaking of Comic Zones and games kind of like that, where it's like, well, I enjoyed them, but I don't think they'll make the list. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rocket Knight Adventures. I'm a big fan of those games, the, the Sparkster games. Yeah. Um, I, I think they age extremely well, have zero problem with it not making the list, but it's a game I really enjoyed back in the day. No one mentioned Echo the Dolphin. Oh, shit. No, not oh, shit. That That's... game was bad. Um, look, I know people love that game, but it's just like, I didn't play it in that era, so it's just, when I, when you, if you go back and play it now, it's just, it was the first game that was almost like one of those, it is an experience, and I don't, I just don't think that that works for everything. You know what I'm saying? Like I can play Abzu and journey and all that now. And I get it and I understand it. But like, if you didn't play it in that era, I feel like the whole, it's an experience thing. Doesn't always translate when you try to play it in 2017, you know? And I feel like that's one of those games. Huh? Huh? If you change some dates around that, you almost described what I feel about limbo. Huh? Yeah, I I can see people. I've heard, you know. I, I, I still want Wes to play Inside. I think Inside was a better Inside version. Inside is but, great. Little but, Nightmares is basically Inside as well. So, and, and, well, Now we're way down the, the, yeah, the rabbit hole. Yeah, 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 sorry. I, sorry. I, just, I just feel like since we call, called back no. pretty much every other gag on the podcast, just to throw, throw the limbo gag out there. Listen, <laughs> I, mean, I'm, I'm, I, I, I completely agree. I think Echo, if you were into it during the time, I get it. I wasn't into it. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's aged that well. Uh, Wes, any other games that you want to mention? Uh, there's, there, there. Mm, I guess, I guess I can kind of throw it out, and then we can bridge to the Super Nintendo using it because there's a there's another game of the same type that I think warrants conversation on the Super Nintendo. But well, before we get to Super Nintendo, I have a few more games. So if you want that to be the bridge, okay. Hold well, off on. Well, well, I think we need to get to the other consoles first before we talk about Super Nintendo. If we're going there. Oh, yeah. Good point. We do have a, co- a couple other minor things that we want to talk about before we hit the Super Nintendo. So, I mean, I, I because it's not a game I, th- I think makes the list, but I think it's a game that kind of it would be a comparison and contrast to a game I think should make the list, if that makes any sense. Sure. So I'll go ahead and I'll, 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 I'll let you go with your games, and I'll just remember to bring up this game when we talk about the game on the Super Nintendo, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Um, okay. So I, I just have a few that I'll, I'll just do rapid fire and, and get you guys a quick comment on. Again, I don't think they're top 100 unless you guys completely disagree. Um, but Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Absolutely love that uh, game. I have, I have that down for the Super Nintendo. Yeah. So I, mean, I want to uh, put... Th- I would put that on... You know, if we're all making personal top 100s, it would totally be on mine because I would, had so you know, much fun with that game. It would, it would be extremely uh, close for me. But w- when we did that, our Super Nintendo list, but which by the hopefully by the time this podcast comes out, that has come out. Um, but it was near the bottom of that list for me. So it was tough for me to say it's a top 100 when it barely cracked my top 20 Super Nintendo games. Um, but that's on there. Uh, Rift Star came out extremely late in the Genesis era. I, I think it kind of got overlooked a bit. Again, not a top 100 game to me. Uh, Shadow Run too was is uh, known really well as a Genesis game. That uh, even though it really, I mean, it uh, the 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 remake of it is is also very good. Um. But it was one of those first games that kind of like just let you do stuff. It had a sandbox. Um, you could make decisions through the dialogue. You didn't have a lot of games like that back then. Yeah. Um, you know. Yeah, that kind of brings up an interesting point because one of my least favorite games of all time is actually Shadowrun for the Super Nintendo, which I understand is a completely different game. But. Like, I would hear people talking about Shadowrun for the Genesis all the time, and I'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? That game was terrible, <laughs> until I realized they were talking <laughs> about this, you know, the Genesis version. And, and, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, a similar thing happened with Aladdin. 
Like I, I can't remember which way is which. But... Lion King. Well, Lion, same thing. Lion King. Lion King was the same game on both consoles, wasn't it? It just had the it had, outrageously difficult. On Genesis, difficult... it was still better. It just had the outrageously difficult fucking I can't wait to be king auto scroller. Oh my god, that level. It didn't auto scroll. Nice try. Yes, uh, it, well, it had an yeah. auto scrolling section, and I have the footage yes, to prove it. it does. No, it has auto scrolling repeatedly. Sections. It has those sections. So don't test me. <laughs> but, no, but that's just a, a, a running section. Uh, to me, auto scrollers is like Mario Three, where the level is moving whether you want to or not, and you can freely move around the screen. You're just stuck on that thing. Uh, a couple more before we move on, though. Uh, Vector Man is a game that I played a lot of, but I think it's terrible. I don't think it's aged yeah. anything. And then uh, the Shinobi games, I think, deserve a mention, too. Oh, the Shinobi games, yes. I don't know why I didn't mention Shinobi 3. It's it's one of the... like When I think of Genesis, that's one of the games I I really enjoy playing, going back to to play it sometimes now. Just... Yeah, for sure. And I like the story behind him, too. They had a like really cool story for Shinobi. But that, but that's Genesis for me if we want to move on, unless you guys have something else. I, uh, that's it for yeah, all, all of for mine. All, all of mine got brought up, whether in you know joking form or just based you know touched on them, because I literally did have a bring up Altered Beast and Hyperstone Heist as as gags on my on my list. So get mission accomplished. <laughs> yeah. Good job, everybody. We can go <laughs> home. Uh, so that being said, um, let's go ahead and before we jump into the main event, there is uh, uh, something else that kind of fits into this generation of consoles that we should talk about, and that's the advent of portable gaming with the Game Boy, and to a much, 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 much lesser extent, the Game Gear. Um, the Game Gear, basically, that's about the last you're going to hear of it because. Eh, it, no. Pretty much every Game Gear game was a port of a Sega Genesis game done poorly, except right. for Sonic Labor- Labyrinth, which was, you know, dumb as hell. Uh, <laughs> hey, let's take a character known for his speed and take away his speed. That'll work, right? Um, <clears throat> so, that being said, though, I think there are a few titles that warrant mention for this list on the original Game Boy. And, again, I'll just go ahead and start off, and I'm going to throw out Link's Awakening. Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. Uh, I, I did not play Zelda until the Super Nintendo game, so this is one I have not gone back to try to play it all, so I, I can't to be, to be fair, I think this might be one that we kind of have to table, because when I think of Link, Link's Awakening, I think of DX, which I'm pretty sure was a Game Boy Color game. Yes, yes. that's the yeah. only game I had for my Game Boy Color for a while. <laughs> And, and and again, to me, I'm not saying Link's, Link's Awakening's not bad, mm-hmm. or I, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's not good. Excuse me, uh, but to me, how many Zelda games can we put on this list? And where yeah, does you gotta Link's Awakening and choosing, rank? You know? yeah. So when when I don't think it's even a top five Zelda game, I, I can't put it on the list. Again, if you're doing just Game Boy games, it's great. It's probably going to make a lot of top tens there. But when we're when we're breaking down a top 100 of all time, how many Game Boy games are going to make it? I think Link's Awakening gets uh, a lot of chatter. I don't think it makes the list. Same thing to me as Super Mario Land 2, Six Golden Coins. I think that was finally when they figured out how to do Mario on the handheld. Uh, the first Mario Land wasn't that great. Um, Insert right. parental floss here. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> But the second one was really fun, and I enjoyed it back in the day playing it. But again, I don't think it would make this list. Yeah, I would agree with you. Um, I think when we're sitting here talking about Game Boy games, uh, for me, aside from the obvious, which we'll get to, uh, I think you know you could uh, you could mention Wario Land. Which is basically Super Mario Land three. Uh, I really enjoyed that. It was my first like, even knowing who Wario was and thinking he was kind of cool because he did stuff that Mario didn't. Uh, the Kirby, I love Kirby. Kirby is one of my favorite characters ever. 
Uh, so I'm partial to his games. Uh, so I, I love the Kirby Dreamland too. That is a fantastic game. But I know not everybody's a big fan of Kirby. So no, I'm not. I talked about it last podcast. Well, you're still going to be doing a little bit of talking about it when we reach the Super Nintendo. But anyway, um, I think we would be remiss if we didn't at least throw Pokemon Red and Blue, Red Blue out there. Um, we, we we kind of discussed this pre-podcast because there was a little bit of confusion about how we wanted to well, handle the Game Boy. Pokemon Yellow is the one I would put on there yes. uh, from the three. Yeah, like like Tournament Edition for NBA Jam, I think Yellow combining the two, Red and Blue, uh, made it effective. And to me, I, I know Pokemon is still a huge craze, and I get into it all the time, too. Uh, there's not much that beats the originals where you only had the, the 151, and it wasn't as convoluted. I'm sure it's not the only Pokemon that'll get nominated, uh, but I want Yellow on the list. Yeah, just from course you know if you watch the anime which this is why this is here is uh also not just because they wanted to combine red and blue it's also because the anime was first starting to become popular so they had pikachu tag along behind you you could see him he had a character it made you like i i you know i don't know how you couldn't other than if you're trying to do that, uh, where, you're, where you're trying to do a trade and you need him to be like super peppy or whatever, other than in those moments, like I don't know how you couldn't want to look behind you, almost like when you had your Tamagotchi or something like that, and go, "Oh man, I, you're sad. Why are you sad? I need to, to to do something so you aren't sad." You know, just like and then just of course having all the great Pokemon stuff in there. Uh, Pokemon is the reason why I love RPGs to this day. So, you know, and it's funny because I really started playing Pokemon. I, I had it. Like, my, my grandparents bought me both of them. But I started playing it when I was on a trip to Colorado. And my brother was actually playing Final Fantasy VII in another room. And I told him, what is this game? It looks so boring. You're just walking around. And my brother goes, you know, you're playing basically the same game I am. You just got cute little monsters that distract you from the fact that you're playing an RPG. And I didn't realize it till much later that, yeah, he was right. You know, it's the same kind of game, but it's, uh, the catching is so, I don't do it now, but the catching stuff was just so great. Uh, then, uh, not, then, then to go and be able to battle with them. Is, it was really cool. Yeah. I, I, I mean, this, I think this has come up on the, on the, the backlog busting project before where I've told this story at some point on air, but every time I think Pokemon, I flash back to my younger days when I was, uh, if you can believe it, an even bigger idiot than I am now sometimes. Uh, <laughs> um, I used to, there used to be a site online called switch house um, where you could, you know, list all your games that you had and then list games that you wanted and, you know, find people to, to trade with. And right around the time Pokemon started becoming a craze, I decided I want to try red, want, wanted to try red and or blue. So I started looking for Pokemon red and or blue. And I found somebody that wanted to trade me Pokemon blue for my copy of Chrono Trigger. Hmm. Straight up one for one trade, cartridge only on both. And my teenage self went, Yeah, sure, why not? Uh. My near 29 year old self looks back at that trade and goes, Holy shit, you monumental dumbass. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you should have traded a Mirthbound instead. Oh, oh, man. oh boy. Anyway, we'll get to that in a minute because there's there, there, there's there's there's. To be fair, I don't think that your young self could have thought that there was never going to be a Chrono Trigger sequel after you play that game, which frankly there was. But yeah, there was, but Chrono that Trigger that 2. that's a story for next week. That's a story for next episode. <laughs> but like, you know, it's it's like uh, it's. The, sometimes I go and wonder, like, why didn't I like those games when I was younger, but I liked Pokemon, or I liked this, and it's just like, damn, that's that's crazy. But, uh, yeah, I think we all had moments we were 
we did stupid things when we were kids. It's all right. We'll be all right. All right. So um, there, there's one other game I want to throw out. And it, it also, now that I think about it, uh, ties into the game I didn't mention for the Sega Genesis and the game I want to mention for the Super Nintendo. So uh, I'll go ahead and throw this out there. The game I want to seriously nominate is Tetris. Well, we already have it, but... We have it on NES. Oh, yeah, we did. Shit. We have it as, we have it as a multi... I put it as a multi thing. Yeah. Because uh, there's, yeah, because there's another that... game that we're going to talk about where they kind of take it into a different direction. I think I know um, which game you're talking about, but... Yeah, uh, but it's just basic Tetris. That thing has been put on so many different yeah. systems. That is like, I mean, okay. the Game Boy was the reason it became huge yes. here. I yeah. mean, if, if we, we have to that... put it on one system, I'm going to say put it on the Game Boy. Yeah, that, that that's... Sorry, that's kind of where I was going with it, is Tetris. Yeah. When I think Tetris as a game, as an industry-shaping thing, I think of it as... I think of it on the Game Boy. Well, I can change it to Game Boy right now instead of the multi. That's yeah, what we want. yeah. I, no I, I think we'll go ahead and do that. But uh, uh, to uh, a game I was kind of surprised when I did research for this that came up a lot um, was actually uh, I don't know how you say it because it's kind of a weird spelling, but Kix Q I X for the original Game that. Boy. I don't know what that is. Uh, it is a, a puzzle game where you control where uh, you control a little like uh, I, I guess the best way I'll put it is a little spark that uh, you can run around the four borders of the screen, and uh, uh, this this uh, this energy is uh, chasing you, uh, like home, homing in on you and bounces off the four walls, and you basically have to box it in by drawing lines and completing boxes and like closing in the space. It's really hard to adequately explain, but when you play it, it's really engaging and fun. Because um, I used to own an original Game Boy, and uh, Kix was actually a game I owned for it, and I played the fucking hell out of it because it, it, it it's it's it had that same kind of Tetris feel of it's really easy to understand what you're supposed to be doing, but it's kind of hard to execute because you know you, you had to sit there and go. Uh, uh, because uh, you would die if the thing intersected with you while you're trying to dry up, draw a box, you would die and lose all your progress on that box. And you could either, like, your strategy could be you could just go, like, bisect the screen half at once with the fast line and score less points for, you know, that part of the screen, or you could try and do it with slower lines because you could either go fast or slow and get more points for going slow. And it was a really fun game for me, and I was just gonna bring it up as a personal selection. But if you go and look at pe- like other people's, you know, top Game Boy games lists, I found it a good two or three more times than I was expecting to. <laughs> list worthy? See, the thing is, I'm not quite sure. I mean, again, if the scope of this were a little bit smaller. Like, if we were talking top games of this, you know, like, if this episode itself were going to become a top article, I would mm-hmm. throw it on there. But for top 100, hmm, probably not. I mean, we should always keep a list of that, because, you know, we could always do. We don't have any of those kind of things other yeah. than the Super Nintendo, so we could always turn those into articles to create content. So yeah. don't lose those these lists here that we're mm-hmm. making. Yeah. Oh, you know, you, you should know Randy by now. He has lists out the ass and spreadsheets out the ass. Yep. And he is an I ass. List, I mean, I do not list my poop. Knock it <laughs> off. I'm not that crazy. Yes. Uh, the game I want to nominate, just to get off of that, uh, a game I haven't played, but kind of the same thing where Wes was talking about, where he saw, <laughs> I saw this on a lot of lists, uh, listening to the kind of funny top 100. They brought this up as well and well, i looked up some footage of it and it looks like a, a complete blast and now i want to play it and that's donkey kong it, it's called donkey kong 94 by a lot of people um but if you go back and watch it it, it looks like a complete upgrade to the original donkey kong games yeah that's actually a good point uh i i, I seem to remember it I, I mean, now that you've mentioned it, I, I remember it vaguely. But does it make a list? I don't know. I'll, I'll put it on there with Toad Gem and Earl right now. I mean, if we hit 30 and we need things to, to get rid of, 
I have no problem taking it off. I'll put it on there now. Uh, one game that I don't think makes the list, but I just want to bring up because I think it's better than a game we put on the list last week, and that's Metroid 2, uh, The Return of Samus. I think that was actually a better game than the original Metroid, um, but I don't think it's list-worthy. Hmm. Oh. But I didn't think the original Metroid was list-worthy. I got vetoed, so... Yeah. Well, um... Hmm. I, I, I mean, yeah, it's, I, I mean, this will bring us to, like, what, 15 total before we even t- started talking about the Super Nintendo? Uh, if we put it on Metroid 2, it'd be 13. I mean, go ahead and throw it on there, just for shits and giggles, I guess. Talking about poop, <laughs> still. <laughs> Odd. He is oh, stuck on the poop. It's in the, and, and this is the worst. All he is doing is talking about poop. And next week, I have to get in an argument. <laughs> with yes. About Conquer's Bad Fur Day. And the only good thing about that game was the Great Mighty Poo. <laughs> and, and then we're going to have to go on to a podcast where I'm probably going to have to talk about the Great Mighty Poo maybe starting in Cleveland. And I can't do it. <laughs> let's, let's go. Let's move on to Oh, the great mighty poo, we're bringing that in here again. Yeah, so let's just move on to the, uh, the Super Nintendo. For those that only... Well, hold on, we gotta, we gotta mention the Neo Geo here, because Metal okay. Slug needs to at least be on the list, even if we na- we knock it off. He's got a point, though. Because, uh, uh, you know, Metal Slug, Slug is freaking great. I, uh, it, well, I mean... Uh, the wonderful thing about the Switch, if you love Neo Geo, they are constantly putting... Neo Geo games on the Switch that you can buy for seven dollars. Uh, it's it, they also put it on PS4 and Xbox One too. But like it's having this revival now, and some of the game like Windjammers is getting remade right now. Well, yeah, but that's and almost kind of like that's almost because it became a meme in and of itself. Right, but like Windjammers was fun when like you were a kid. I don't know, I wouldn't put it on the list, but it was fun. It was a fun game. Yeah. So which uh, metal which metal slug are we putting on? Because there's five hundred of them. Yeah, there's. A, I would put X on there. It's okay. a better version of two, and you know, I would mention that you know, King of Fighters has also kind of got its start here, and the Fatal Fury had one of their best games ever, the Guru Mark of the Wolves. Um, right. two. Well, we have sixteen games left <laughs> before we start booting some. And I think we're going to hit that mark pretty easily with this system oh, yeah. coming up. So let's get to it. All right. Well, as we've kind of been skating around for the last hour or so, um, it's time to talk about the heavy hitter uh, of this particular crop of consoles, and that is the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, known as the SNES for short. And uh, some of the most iconic games of all time came out for this system. Okay, so we, we, before we get into the big discussions, and we're gonna leave, uh, we'll put RPGs in their own thing. Obviously, the things I'm going to bring up as no doubters, there are RPGs that are no doubters, mm-hmm. but I want to bring that up as a section. I'm just going to go quiet for a second because I'm going to be typing these out. But Super Mario World, Link to the Past, Super Metroid, they're making the list. Yeah, I think they're absolutely. no doubters, right? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Chrono yeah. Trigger is a no doubter. I said yeah. no RPGs yet. Yeah, we're we're, we're oh, going to have okay. the RPGs discussion simply because I, uh, if you go back and listen to specific episodes of our prior output, um, a, a couple of the RPGs that I, you and I would consider no doubters, my co- podcast co-host does not like. Uh oh. Yeah, uh, he 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 was not a fan of Earthbound, obviously. And right. he was uh, slightly more receptive to Super Mario RPG, but uh, um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I don't think he ever got around to playing Chrono Trigger on the podcast. We've discussed it before. I think he actually, I think he said he's gotten to like Lavos, like the like literally gotten almost to the final battle and then dropped it. <laughs> yeah, but, oh, well, that but, sucks. But, but, but but like was like it, it was so long ago that he doesn't yeah, really but, remember it. But I, if I remember right, I got to Lavos like early like we i like going back and watching like oh the i think and i stuff. Yeah, you're you talking get to lavos yeah. early you're I, screwed yeah because, i got to lavos yeah. way before and you know this was early on in my rpg days i thought that was it and then i was screwed so i had dropped it at that point and then okay. going back and watching again like the completionist and stuff i'm going 
oh, there's all this other stuff I <laughs> didn't do. Yeah. So uh, to me, those are three no doubters that I brought up. Okay, we'll get to RPGs in a second. So cool your jets. Um, other games that I think should make the list because again, RPGs are, are so huge in this. But uh, Turtles in Time, I think, should make the list. Oh and yeah, no doubt. I, I say Donkey Kong Country 2 should make the list just because I know DKC was a big part of the system. Going yeah. back and playing it, it's a great game, but the save system is the dumbest I've ever seen in a game. And it's but, hard. But, but I, I have no problem. It's hard. Just yeah. the save system makes no sense. Um, but I, I think Turtles in Time and Diddy Kong's Quest are both no-doubters as yeah. well. Anybody else have any no-doubters, non-RPG-like? Uh, do you... What did you guys do with Punch? Did I don't remember seeing it. Was Punch Out on the Nintendo one? We discussed it. Yes, I'm pretty sure we said it was going to be on. Yeah, Punch Out is on there. Okay, yeah. so we don't need to have it on twice. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I brought it up. I, I have it on my list as a point of discussion. Super Punch Out. But yeah, yeah. I, I I think the original is the the the, the clear winner in in that discussion. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Par- personally, I'm partial to. Like I liked Castlevania a lot more on the Super Nintendo than I did on the Nintendo. So Super Castlevania Four, in other words. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. it's on my my discussion list because again, how many Castlevanias do we put on there? Uh, there will be one next week that we put on. Yeah, um, right. And that's when Castlevania kind of went completely different. I, I mean, that's Castle- the one that if you're talking about Castlevania, that's the one you put on. If, yeah, you know, next week. So. Yeah. Yep. Um, I'll, you know, uh, I'll put Castlevania on there for now again as one of those we might drop but I, I'm with you, I enjoyed Castlevania 4 I thought it was a great upgrade from the NES games Yeah, uh, F-Zero was really really fun on the Super Nintendo Yeah, um, I, 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 it got remade on the GBA better but this was it was great for its time like Getting a racing game that was like Mario, oh, well, Mario Kart, obviously, as well. Ooh, yeah, Super Mario Kart. Although, yeah, Double Dash. That's what, uh, Double Dash is getting put on instead of this one. Maybe, I don't know. The new Mario well, Kart is uh, Hold good. on. Well, for one, the 64 version is the ultimate version of Mario no, Kart. No, it's not. Oh, oh boy. Yes, it is. Popcorn? Yes, it is. Where's my popcorn? And Double Dash is not even that great. Where's my but... popcorn? Yeah, no, I, I will say Mario, Mario Kart. For one, the Mario Kart Eight that's out right now is is in superior. the top, whatever you yeah. know. I, I think um, that'll be the one that gets on. But I mean, Super Mario Kart, the first one, just to be able to play Mario in a different form, and it's just so much fun. It was like the game you could put in front of anybody. You pick it up, and you instantly know what you're doing. And it's just oh, it was so great I to have, battle. I have, so I, ha- awesome. I have some clips from the from this year's uh, charity marathon that might disprove that or prove it, <laughs> depending on how you look at well, it. Well, yeah, I mean, some people just, you know, it's. I, I'm not gonna say I've, I ever got to the point where I could be competitive at Mario. I can't get past like being fourth online right now on Mario Kart Deluxe, uh, but well, you know. Well, I'm I, I I more just brought that up to see if I can get a reaction out of Randy again because he knows full well what I'm talking about. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and I'm still a better gamer than you, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there was a point where Randy was going for I believe it was a win against the AI, and I sucked out loud, so I was like in dead last. But I took a turn wrong right in front of him and bumped into him and cost him the race. I thought you were talking about when Matt and I couldn't get through a race to save our lives no uh, i i was just bringing up from although that's okay. also a nice nice opportunity to troll you thank you uh yeah, no i was, I was talking about when i when, when i accidentally cost you a race <laughs> I, I i will say this just because sean you won't be on next week when we talk about the n64 mario kart 64 is fine it has the worst rainbow road are we really gonna base it on one track no i'm just saying has the worst oh. rainbow road, and, and some of those tracks are just. Eh. I I played a lot of sixty four, um, and I wouldn't say it's the worst one, but I don't think it's the best one either. But either way, it's not making the list, and either is this one. But it is worth mentioning. Um, let's see, Mega Man X. Where do we stand on that? 
Yeah, you guys know I'm a huge Mega Man fan, so I, I want to put it on the list. But I, I was, I got I a mean, lot of trouble with Robert, who has made his list so far from the games we talked about last podcast, and he has Mega Man the two and three as the very bottom. So I, I know where I, I'm in the minority here, but I thought Mega Man X was a great step up. Oh, uh, Mega Man X was was really good. I mean, let's not play around with that. It is and was a great Mega Man. Uh, it starts going downhill very much quicker than the original Mega Man yes. did, you know. But I think you should. I would put it on there as, as one of the best games on the Super Nintendo. Yeah, uh, Wes, you got anything? Uh, for Mega Man or just in general? Uh, for for in general. Okay. Well, for 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 Mega Man, I I, I do agree. X should be on there. Um, yeah, it's uh, on there. <clears throat> uh, X is going to give it to you. Oh Jesus Christ! Oh man, that's Jesus terrible. Jesus Christ! <laughs> DMX man. Ooh, I really boy. liked the Axe Razor too. Wow, that I really, just I, happened. I was a big Axe Razor person. Um, I guess I guess I'll just go ahead and throw this out of here to get this comparison out of the way before I completely forget about it. Um, back when we were talking about the Sega Genesis, I threw I started to think about throwing out a game and then I said I'd throw it out when we got to the Super Nintendo. Um, it came up again for the Game Boy. Um, the game I wanted to throw out for the uh, Sega Genesis was Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, which was the West's introduction to the Puyo Pop style of gameplay and is a pretty solid puzzle, right. puzzle game in its own right. I'm not sure it's top 100 worthy, but the game that I then wanted to compare it to was Tetris Attack. For the Super Nintendo, which was uh, uh, our introduction to Panel to Pawn, and actually, to my well, knowledge, that's the only that, that that's the only time we've actually kind of gotten that style of game here in the, the West, and it's a really fun game, in my opinion. Oh uh, well, Kirby Superstar Ultra for me. Uh, that game is the epitome, I think, of Kirby. When you know you have so many things of Kirby in one, the the main game that you play for Kirby is is really good, and then some of the other special, like the one going in the mine and getting the items and stuff, is really fun too. So, when I think of where I've enjoyed Kirby the most, aside from it is probably aside from like the portable ones. Console wise, that's the one that I think of. Kirby's not making the list. <laughs> oh, it kind of has to. your hatred of Kirby. Oh, it's boring. Well, honestly, I, I, this is a democracy, asshole, and I'm going to throw my vote with Sean. Kirby Superstar. Come, hold on. Discussion. There were so many games that were very much like Kirby. It was the side scrolling king platform. I mean, and, and Kirby did a, a, a very uh, innovative thing for its time. So, you know, he's still one of the most kick-ass characters in Smash Brothers, so you can't hate me on that. <laughs> Again. So what are we put on Kirby Superstar what? Kirby Superstar Ultra. All right. <laughs> um, but Sean brought up Act Or Razor Deluxe and... or whatever the hell it is. Yeah. I forgot. Sean brought up the Act Razor and Wes was rude and interrupted him. So, Wes, what did you think of Act Razor? Wait, I... Something must be going wrong with my connection because I don't remember no, anything his, about Act Razor. He was going in and out at that point. Okay. So in order to to make it to where there wasn't like a bunch of robot in dead air, I just said Act. I mean, Act Razor is a really good game. I don't know that. Okay, I may I may have to edit this out, but I I'm recording this. I don't have anything of you saying Act Razor, and to me, I started talking about Tetris Attack, and then all of a sudden, you jumped in with Kirby. Yeah. So I have no idea what the hell's going on right now. It's a good podcast. You're, <laughs> you're st- yeah, you're still doing that a little bit here and there. That's okay. My best part is I said who wants Earthbound in and West didn't say anything, so it didn't make the list. So it's all right. <laughs> well, guess what also isn't on my end of the recording? Because I'm pretty sure I'm the only person recording this conversation, correct? No. Yes, uh, nobody told me to... Re- oh. Randy's recording too. Okay. Oh, absolutely. I don't. I don't want Wes to edit what I say. No. <laughs> I would have All recorded right. too if you said anything. 
Uh, no. so, uh, well, we, think- we were we were naively hoping that Cable One would not be complete and utter dog shit. <clears throat> it never works. Any other non RPG games that you guys want to bring up at this point? Okay. Uh, I think we sort of, I mean, covered them all. I, I mean, we're also getting to the point where you're just naming stuff, and it's not going to be on the list. And yeah, that, that's where I'm at. I think. SimCity was great for the Super Nintendo, but I think if a SimCity right. makes it a SimCity 2000. Uh, Contra 3 was great. Oh, Yoshi's I, Island. See, that's where I, I, that was the next one I was going to bring up. I've never played it. I've heard amazing things. Is it top 100 worthy? Oh, you know, the thing is with like, if you try to play Yoshi's Island now, it's your it's it tests your patience let me say that like it's it's one of the, because you know you got the crying mario and you got to save him constantly and whatever but when like you were looking for a mario game at that point and it was so cool because yoshi was a big part of super mario world and then you got a game where you get to basically can you know you're saving mario as yoshi how cool was this you know and I feel like it doesn't hold up as well. Also because every other version of Yoshi's Island that we've gotten is not the original version. It's another version that they choose to keep porting over. So uh, I would say you put it on the list because I find remember right on our top 30 it scored pretty high. But yeah. You know, I don't know where it's, it would land at the end of the day, you know. Okay. Uh, I, I was never a big Bomberman fan, so that's up to you guys. Yeah, I, I know. I'm, me neither. And same with Star Fox. I don't think Star Fox for the Super Nintendo. No, that 64 good. version is yes. the ultimate version. There's no even point of talking about the Super Nintendo one, which okay, is and, fine in its own right. And, and before I let Wes jump back in here, I, I'll just throw out one more. It's not making the list. It's just one of those. Absolutely love it. Um, uh, rock and roll racing. It's a great racing game. Oh, yeah. God. It's not a top 100 well, game. It, 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 in the same vein from the same company, Lost Vikings. Yes. Yeah. Blizzard great games. Games great. that weren't. Yeah, great games. And I don't think make the list. Like right now, we have six spots open and a lot of RPGs to get to. So okay. we'll be editing some of this list out. But yeah. uh, uh, I just wanted to throw those out before we, we get lost in the RPG shuffle, which Wes, start us off. And we're back. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Uh, cup might be a little bit abrupt. I'll do what I can. But uh, my internet crapped out <clears throat> because professionalism. Anyway, uh, we were talking about RPGs on the Super Nintendo. And uh, since this is kind of my domain as uh, uh, one of the two co-hosts of the Backlog Busting Project, I guess I'll go ahead and start us off. Uh, We're not going to quite touch the elephant in the room yet. Um, We're going to go with one that should be obvious to anybody. uh, Me and Sean kind of talked about while Randy went silent at the start of this segment, uh, and that's Chrono Trigger. Yeah, absolutely. I've already wrote it up. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I mean, just... To this day, people still hold Chrono Trigger up as what to do in an RPG in regards to encounter design. Uh, you know, the the, the complete eliminate the all, near complete elimination of random encounters, or, or, or encounters that seem to happen for no reason. Um, th- a, a, a decently paced storyline. Uh, one of the only times I've ever seen a time travel storyline be at le- be not an excuse, basically. Um, Great music, uh, oh, for for, for uh, and, and you know it's just a gem of an RPG, <laughs> I, I, like no no ifs ands or buts about it. Now, I mean, I guess I should just kind of riff off the bandage here, but we'll get we'll we'll take it in steps. No, no, no. wait for that one. The That's next, the main event. Yeah, the next one I want to mention is Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. Yeah, it's um, the hookup between Nintendo and Square that uh, people don't really talk about because Nintendo seems to... Nintendo nor Square seem to really want to do anything else with it, even though it is a beloved game. 
Uh, I really wish there would be the surprise of all surprises that we'd get a number two. You know, look, Final Fantasy VII, you can say what you want. Oh, remake. If they come out of E3 and decide that they want to say this is Super Mario RPG number two, oh my God. Talk about the reaction videos no. for that shit right there. No, because okay? listen, and not, not that it's going to be great. Listen, I played this game for the podcast. Uh, and I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. Um, I didn't quite hook me as I think Wes was hoping, but I'm not going to say it shouldn't be on the list. I thought it was a great 16 bit RPG. And, and that's what I'm saying. I don't want to hear that it's going to be remade simply for the fact that it's square. Square Enix says it's going to remake something. Expect it in 20. Never. Well, I'm not saying remake. I'm saying if you anything, do a sequel or something. anything, it, well, it won't hey, matter. Hey, 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 hey. They're, they're, they're doing Lost Spear spelled completely incoherently from the same team that brought us the shit show that was I Am Setsuna. Uh, just, 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 guys, just wait. How long have we been waiting for Kingdom Hearts 3? Well, wait till 2020 when you get episode one. Oh, God. That's what's going to happen. Because that is Tetsuya a... Nomura is goddamn insane. <laughs> I don't think so, it's Nomura. I think it's the people talking to Nomura saying, well, this episodic thing is starting to make money. Let's just do our RPGs like that. Look what happened with Final Fantasy XV. We ran out of money, so we had to put it out, and now we're constantly adding stuff to it. So, you know. <sighs> but, uh, Got a little off subject, but no, it, uh, like Super Mario RPG is is one of the when I think sometimes we tend to we tend to overrate it a bit because it's still I think in a way you got a lot of that in the Mario and Luigi games that came out later and and Paper Mario um, and Paper Mario and we kind of just want that and you don't get that itself anymore so we kind of tend to overrate it a bit i think definitely it is a game you would put on the list um i don't know that when you're looking at some of these other rpgs how far it stands up next to it you know I, I think it stands stands up pretty tall. Like there, there there are three or four RPGs that I would consider no brainers. We've heard two of them. One of them is going to result in a massive argument, which is why I'm tiptoeing around it. But and then the other one would be Final Fantasy VI. Yeah, and I've already wrote that one down. I think Final Fantasy VI is is a no brainer. It's on the list. Um, just for the fact that even if I've never played an RPG, you just have to look at anybody's top 10 RPGs. It's always there. Um, and so I'm not against that. My question is Final Fantasy 4. Does that one? I love Final Fantasy 4. I love Final Fantasy 4. The story with Final Fantasy 4 is one of their best ones. Um, the mu- That's when the music for Final Fantasy started becoming a thing. Like when you would start saying, "Oh my God, the music in this game is like blow away awesome." Uh, the like the different, uh, you know, the job system came in the next game, but like just the having the different characters and and all that stuff, which is something that six just expanded upon and made even better, which is why it's considered, you know, still to many the standout Final Fantasy period, but. I I don't know. I I think when you're trying to it was it it didn't even make our top 30. Just that was more of a we were trying to think of what would get on the mini mm-hmm. SNES. Yeah. Which is different. Yes. Uh but like yeah, when you're when you're talking about the most those standout games, I don't like if you have to leave one off cuz I think it's hard to go, okay, we're going to put all of these on. You know, that's that's one you might have to consider, along right. with Secret of Mana, of how much did you like it, how great do you think it is, and should it yeah. make it, you know? Yeah. 
that uh, that that that's kind of where I am on it too. I mean, Final Fantasy IV is a great game. Don't get me wrong, but Final Fantasy VI eclipses it in pretty much every way that matters for this list. And it also, because it's Final Fantasy, runs into the issue we've been having with a couple of the other series in that you and I, yeah. everybody sitting here that can hear my voice right now knows for a fact that there are at least two, if not more, Final Fantasy games that are going to be brought up next week. There's probably a couple more that will be brought up the week after that. There's at least one more that will be brought up the week after that. So we start running into the, okay, just how many Final Fantasy games are we going to have on this list? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Final Fantasy 12, Final Fantasy 11. I mean, you can put on the list and then we can debate if we want to take it off or not. Because, like, I really loved Secret of Mana. I know it's not a game that everybody loves. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, it's getting a collection for a reason, though, because of that. I don't know that it's going to come here. Yeah. Uh, but even though it should, mm-hmm. but still, I mean, it, it it was a game that did something different. You know, it it wasn't like the other uh, RPGs that Square had made up to that point. The music was also great, which was again uh, par for the course for Square. It had three player co op, which. When the hell does that ever happen in an RPG? Yeah. Um, well, so co-op you know. period in an RPG. I mean, the right. only the only one uh, other one I can think of that really even kind of has that as a feature is nine, <laughs> Final Fantasy nine, and even then it's yeah. like you, you one player can control two people and the the other player can control two people. It battles only. Ooh, yeah. You know? <laughs> but and it was an action RPG. It wasn't necessarily yeah. a total. Yeah. So I, I would say yeah. I would say Secret of Mana makes the list. So, is that an agreement? Yeah, that that's an agreement. I'm. I, well, okay. I was trying to think of if there, there was anything, any any other ones that we haven't brought up yet. Yes, there's one. Well, well, two. Besides, but one that... besides the one that I've been tiptoeing around with all the <laughs> grace uh, my six foot five, four hundred pound frame can allow. Yeah, and this is speaking. I, I'll bring up one. I don't think it makes the list just because I think there, from what I've been told, there are better ones in the series. That that may make the list later on. Best Breath of Fire. I yeah. When I first when I first got into RPGs, obviously Final Fantasy VII was the one I got into, um, and then I went back and was playing Breath of Fire Two. Was the first actual Super Nintendo RPG that I played and got way into. It's a it's a bit short for an RPG, mm-hmm. and it doesn't stack up to the likes of the Chrono Triggers and Final Fantasy VI and stuff. So I don't think it makes a list, but I mean. It's still a pretty good Super Nintendo RPG. I mean, yeah, that that's true. A couple others I can think of off the top of my head: uh, Illusion of Gaia or Terra Enigma. Uh, Lufia. Lufia two. Um, as well, those yeah. were that was another game that's very much like what Randy just talked about. That it's it's one of those like if you're into RPGs, yeah, you play that game. It's a very good RPG. I don't know that you you don't put it on the list. Um, yeah. It would be an honorable mention, but eh. right. If this was top whatever RPGs, yeah, there's where you might go. Okay, where does it stand there? Right. Yeah. But um, there was another one that I can't think of right this minute. Uh, that's not the one that, that we have been. Yeah. Uh, tiptoeing around, but it'll it'll probably come to me at some point. But okay, well, shall we take the gloves off and get ready for the main event, Mister Isbell? All right, Mario Paint. How do you guys think about that? <laughs> I loved Mario Paint. Why have, why did we not talk about Mario Paint? You know how great that game was. <laughs> How cool it was to sit there and have a thing that you you could paint on screen. I mean, honestly. <laughs> And, and you can fly the flies. I just started yes, doing the splice water mini game in my head. Yeah, flies in a video game. I'm oh, putting it on uh. there. I'm putting Mario Paint on there. Mario Paint is the 30th game on our list. I'm sorry, we have no more room. Podcast. <laughs> Until next time, play more game. No, uh, <clears throat> no. With I, I think we've been teasing. I can't it long believe enough. like Weston do the super sad face or something like. <laughs> 
You know, like, oh, you're not even going to talk about my game here. <laughs> no, we've been, we've it's been kinda, waiting. It's, kinda hard to, it, it's kind of hard to do that on a audio only podcast. But like I said, we'd be remiss at this point because we've been kind of building to it all episode. And it's been the joke between, you know, everybody involved in this project for the longest time now that I remain convinced of the fact that Earthbound deserves consideration for this list. Mr. Isbell does not agree with me. <laughs> but... And even to this day, I still kind of find it hard to, hard to, to articulate. Uh, it's just that it, it's... It took a bunch of the tropes of the setting and turned, you know, of an RPG and turned them on its ear. I enjoy the battle system consistently to this day. It spawned an entire community of, you know, like-minded creators. Uh, it inspired several games on it uh, that, you know, could make this list on its own right. Uh, it inspired uh, Undertale for one. And I think it deserves consideration, even if some people don't like it. <laughs> specifically. Uh, well, I mean, I would tell you, this is one of those that I will go two-on-one with, I think. I Look, I'm not the biggest Earthbound fan, but for what it does, and for being able to take an RPG, have Japanese... RPG things in it and have a story that's both interesting and also different than what, what... I like the story in that game. I don't okay, explain you know, the story in that game. I don't want to go through and sit here and talk about this, but it's just because there's know. no story. Excuse me. <laughs> there's no story in the game. Excuse me. <sighs> there are. Oh my god. No, there's not. You're a character that does nothing. Okay. He's okay. trying to save Earth. He he gets a fated mission to go out and save the Earth from a uh, 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 all encompassing alien destroyer, and he does that by visiting eight sp- okay. eight spots known so you, to hold power via you're the sound explaining, stone. You're explaining every RPG so far. Continue. Okay, but wait. So we're gonna say that those Just, RPGs should be in there, but not. Earth okay, so here, here's I, I have no problem with making it a nominee, and, and you know I, I love to push Wes's buttons on this game because he thinks it's one of the best out there, and I still say I don't think it's a bad game. I think it's an average game, just like Breath of Fire. I don't think should make the list because I think it was an average RPG, pretty good for the Super Nintendo, uh, but not to the likes of Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy. It's the same with Earthbound. It's the crux of the story is every what he just said. It's it's a group of friends or a group of random people getting together to save whatever planet you're on from an evil force, and you have to go around the planet and collect certain things to be able to stop them. That is a generic RPG, right? Right. I mean, if I, you if also I, have that's what I'm saying. If I just said that, you would be thinking of one of 500 different RPGs. To me, the characters are not that. The main characters are not that interesting. They don't really delve into them. Like you have those little mini missions right at the beginning of when you they get ready to join, but they don't really go through a lot. They have that one thing with Ness where he goes into his subconscious, but to me, that would have worked a lot better if, say, Earthbound had come out later, where you were actually able to delve into Ness, and then you could actually really get into his character. It was an interesting concept didn't quite work at the time in my opinion and I, I will say that the the countdown um, damage counter for the battle system was unique and intriguing and I will give it credit for that but just to me I play RPGs for the story and earthbound once you got out of the the fart and and little kid jokes it, it brought nothing to the table that was different except for the whole being said in modern times instead of a fantasy world thing you know, but hey, who's who's judging, right? The soundtrack so, is also really great in that game. I love the music uh, in that game. 
Uh, the visuals are, are terrible, though. The visual, the battle acid trips. Are See, rough. I love the battle backgrounds uh, in Earthbound. I think for what you were for the limitations of that system back then, that was really cool. So, I, I guess again, I'm going to put it on the list. I have no problem with it, and I'm not going to be like Robert and put it at the very bottom of <laughs> my list for spite. Um, but again, I like to push buttons with Wes, but I think it's it's a it's a decent RPG. But Wes, you brought up one point that you know I I, I just want to bring back. So if you do a game, or there's a basic genre of a game, and you just change the timeline, it makes it better. No, but I think I, I think a large part of RPGs uh, of the time. Because that the, the same basic plot structure does happen in Super Nintendo games. Like, for example, the, the, that plot description I gave can describe Super Mario RPG. Where, where things get interesting is the, the, the dressing around that basic structure. Yeah. And Earthbound's no, dressing is, is unique and is part of what makes Earthbound such a good game. Because, in my opinion. Because... It takes, you know, the, the the standard kind of RPG fare and applies it to, the re- to some a simulation of modern life. Like instead of gold, you're collecting, you, you you pay for stuff with dollars. You go to the drugstore to go buy a hamburger to heal instead of going to like the apothecary yeah. and buying a potion. You and know, I, I just you can, I, I just you can, will you say can get teddy bears to take a hit for you. You know that that I, sort I, of thing. I, I will say anybody that goes yo-yos to, and baseball bats. Yeah, anybody that goes to a drugstore to buy a hamburger. That's a little rough, but no, I get it. And I was—that's a whole intrigued. other discussion because in <laughs> some places, that's my, all my, you my can inner do food nerd just started dollars. raging at how how you phrase that. But that's an but no, entirely listen, different and podcast. I get it. And I'm not saying <laughs> that it should not be accounted for at all. And again, that's why I'm putting it on the list and not fighting for a breath of fire. Is because yes, it was a bit different. My ar- arguments are always when it's brought up as one of the best RPGs of all time. I also get mad because I spent two hundred dollars to get the stupid game. Because again, I was told, oh, it was that that unsung hero of, of RPGs back then. That is super rare and super expensive. So it was my big 1,000th game for my collection, so I, I splurged on it, and it's not worth $200. So, yes, I'm a little bitter towards that. But again, I, I go to the point of saying it's average at, with, you know, a little bit different feeling. I, I was going to make the joke, and I, I like your points, Wes. I'm not saying your your points are invalid or anything, but I you took away the joke of me saying, well, the new follow or not all out. The new Far Cry is going to be better because it's modern times and in Montana. Because that's going to be. Oh, so there's, the, there's nothing modern about in Montana. America. <laughs> there's nothing modern about Montana. Let's not kid ourselves. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're next to Montana. Yeah. Um, no, again, I, I, I have no problem with putting on the list. I, I wasn't going to come on here and try to say it doesn't deserve to be considered. I, I don't think it's going to make my top 100, but again, I'm not going to make it 180th out of spite. We'll, we'll see where it falls. But out of the other RPGs we nominated, uh, to me, it's the bottom of those. Yeah. I also should mention there's two Japanese-only RPGs that should get mentioned, even though it's going to be unfair because uh, they have great... Uh, you know, histories in, in their own, right? Mm-hmm. Or, well, three of them. They all started on this system or or got a very good boost on the system. You know, mm-hmm. the uh, Star Ocean series started on this system. The Tail series started on this system. And, uh, you know, Dragon Quest had some of their, some really good, you know, some really good games on the system, too. So, yeah, but, probably, uh, yeah. You know, yeah, about the only Dragon Quest game I see making this list is not for another two episodes. So, and that gives away which one it is. But uh, um, Tales again, same boat. I mean, uh, eh. and Star Ocean, ugh, Star Ocean, Star Ocean. I think we'll have a serious discussion about next time because no, the- if if you say the one on the PlayStation's good, we're gonna fight. I I played that game. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, next week's gonna be fun. No, the one but... on the the one that just got remade for uh, or got remastered for PS4, I think, is the one you talk about when you talk about Star Wars. Oh, wait, no, I'm not thinking of the PlayStation one. I'm thinking of the uh, um, uh, PlayStation Two one. Yeah. So I like me. the one Sean was talking Two about. One. Yeah. I, anyway, it, I'm not saying it, again. It was it just drug. It drugged so long in the same. Yes, it does. Yeah, but, yeah. but then we're, we're oh. getting a little we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here, forgot, okay. guys. So, so let, let let's steer the ship back into Ritalin Bay. And I know I made that joke. No, wait, I made that joke off cast yesterday. So let's steer the ship back into Ritalin Bay. Um, anything else we want to cover on the Super Nintendo or? That's what I was going to say. We have 30 games right now mm-hmm. without having to cut anything. Is there any game that we missed? that you guys want to throw into consideration before I list our 30 games that we're going to nominate from the 16-bit era. Mm. Uh, Speak now or forever hold your pieces. Uh, I, I know we were having some connection issues earlier, but did we talk about Killer Instinct? No. Um, it's an interesting one. I did see I that. I Killer Instinct more in the 64. And, and and honestly, I think Killer Instinct more for the soundtrack than the fighting. I know the combos were a big thing, um, but when talking about fighting games, which again, I'm not an expert in, um, I don't think it has the same following as the Street Fighter series. So it's tough to say it should make the list, but yeah, we definitely should have brought it up. That's for sure. Yeah. Nothing for the final fight. Yeah, no, I, 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 because I think I think when we talk about that genre, we already kind of covered it with Turtles in Time and Streets of Rage Two. I mean, yeah, I do love Final Five, but I agree, I like yeah. Streets of Rage. And I mean, TNT uh, it, it, again, if if this were if this were we were talking about games and there was going to be a list simply for this generation, it might warrant some consideration. But when we're talking top one hundred of a large amount of consoles. <laughs> Yeah, and and just think about it. We we were smart and decided to make PC its its own episode. Or I, I think this is around the time oh that PC, PC hit its mark big. Uh, so luckily, that's its own thing, and we're going to separate it to a PC only podcast and, and come up with some games there. Because oh my goodness, you this might want to a- go grab Mark for that one. That's a good point. But, all right, so no other games for consideration. I can't really think of anything. Okay, so here are your 30 games from the 16-bit era that will go with the 17 games we have so far. Uh, So, in alphabetical order, you have Chrono Trigger, Donkey Kong Country 2, um, uh, the Donkey Kong 94 Game Boy game, Earthbound, F-Zero, Final Fantasy VI, Gunstar Heroes, uh, Kirby Superstar Ultra, I guess is what you guys came for your final conclusion of what that was called. Uh, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, Mario Paint, Mega Man X, Metal Slug X, uh, Metroid 2 Return of Samus on the Game Boy, NBA Jam Tournament Edition, NHL 94, Fantasy Star 4, Pokemon Yellow, Secret of Mana, Shining Force 2, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Streets of Rage 2, so many 2s. Uh, and now we get into the Super. Super Castlevania 4, Super Mario RPG, both of the Super Mario World games, both the original and Yoshi's Island, uh, Super Metroid, Turtles in Time, Toe Jam and Earl, and Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. 30 games to try to figure out oh, wait, where they... So we're going to really put the Donkey Kong 94 instead of Country 1? Yes. I don't know about that. I feel like you're going to talk about the 30 best games from that generation. You're not going to put the first one. I played the first one. I feel one. like it's just as rough. equal as... Yeah, it's uh, rough. Look, number two is better because you have Diddy Con, you have the co- you know all that. It's it's a, your... It, the levels are... But I, I feel like that first one should be on there. I don't know. Hmm. Well, if we want to eliminate something else, I don't want to eliminate Donkey Kong 94. I think, again, it's not a game I've played, so I'm not like, from personal experience, but watching a, a few videos of it over the last couple of days as I was, I was like coming up with lists for this stuff, it looks excellent. And it, it took the original Donkey Kong and just 
made it so much better. So if there was another game on here that I, I listed that just barely made the cut that you want to cut, like a Mario Paint, I'm fine with. I was I was I liked Mario Paint also because it was like one of those games my sister would play with me, but I don't know. I, I look at it like Mario Maker. Like it's one of those. Like it's really cool. Yeah, it's a creative and everything tool more than a game. But I I yeah I wouldn't consider it a game. Okay, so I'll, I'll take Mario Paint off and we'll put Donkey Kong Country. I have no problem with that. Okay. I now, also forgot to mention the uh, the Tactics Ogre game that's on Super Nintendo, which is fantastic. Uh. The March of Pigs or whatever. So I don't know if you wanted to have that battle between that. I mean, Shining Force was much more well known and all yeah, that. Yeah, I, I, I'm, that I'm was thinking. A, I mean, not that Tactic Tactic Ogre isn't great because there, there's, there's at least one game that's going to get brought up next week that shares a lot of its lineage with that game. Uh, but um, I don't think it makes the list personally. Yeah, I would. I'll go with that. I and, guess. Uh, Wes, I hope when you're editing this that you throw in Chris Jericho at every chance you can get. You just made the list? Oh my god. Yes. Oh my god. Oh my god. I already have enough work cleaning up all the crap about the internet connection. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> or, or, you know, in true me fashion, we'll mention repeatedly that I'm going to edit something and then not edit it at all. But uh, <clears throat> anyway. So that all being said, I'm sure... I am so very, very sure that some of you listening to this right now have very strong opinions about what has transpired over the last hour and a half or so. You may think we missed a few games. You may agree with us wholeheartedly on some games. You may disagree with us wholeheartedly on some of these games. And we would love to hear about it. You can tweet us at BacklogBusting for myself, uh, at Randy Isbell for uh, Randy, and at WTM Sean for Sean. Or you can uh, talk to us in the comments on this on the post for this on WTMNet.com. Basically, there's a lot of ways to reach us uh, to yell at us to just uh, yell at us for how stupid we are and how the host can't speak English. So uh, please feel free to do so. Just keep it classy, keep it civil, or you will make the list and not in the good way. And until next time, whenever that may be which for us it'll be next week, and we'll be talking about uh, the PlayStation 1, the Nintendo 64, um, Sega Saturn, and the Game Boy Advance, I think? Uh, Game others? Boy Color. Game, Game Boy, Boy Colors. Color. Sorry. Boy Color. uh, uh, it's hard for me to think that those are two separate things, because for some reason, uh, this came up pre-show, uh, for some reason I always thought there was less of a gap between the original and the color, but it's like 1989 to 1998, and I'm just like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> that's a discussion for a whole other time, actually, because, you know, my brain just went, wait a minute, there was almost 10 years between the Game Boys, and yet if that happened nowadays, people would be freaking the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? oh my God, is the Game Boy dead? Because there hasn't been a new one in 10 years, you know? Uh, but... Uh, Anyway, kind of got a little off track there. Anyway, like I said, let us know uh, via social media, however you want to do it, Carrier Pigeon, uh, what you thought of these games. Uh, Hope to see you next week for uh, more discussion on the next generation of games. And until next time, whatever that may be, play more games. Have a good afternoon or morning or evening. Randy, do you not hear when he cuts out to? Because you never say anything. So. Okay, I'm sure he's still talking. And I, I don't want to talk over him. But he's gone. I hate I you. I don't both. know what happened. I hate you both so fucking much. <laughs> you dropped out completely. I'm just like, all right. <laughs>